So this is my physics extra credit video. I am doing it over Tamara Bogdanovic's lecture called When Galaxies Collide, What Happens to Their Supermassive Black Holes. Um, the first thing that I'm going to talk about is what I learned that I didn't already know. It was a really hard lecture, I mean, to understand because it's such a huge, I mean, it's such a big topic that um, it's hard, kind of hard to wrap your mind around just the whole idea of a black hole. But um, after taking notes, reviewing them, and Googling a lot, I kind of think I have a good grasp on what she was talking about, um, which is a huge success for me. Uh, first, I learned that black holes usually exist and are present at the center of every galaxy. Uh, occasionally, in universal terms, once in a couple thousand years, galaxies collide, and this collision would have serious consequences for living creatures if our planet were inv ever involved in a collision. Uh, Dr. Bogdanovic sh showed many extremely complicated computer models and showed different stages of these collisions that we suppose would happen according to our physics rules and laws. But something that's kind of interesting is the fact that in space and um, I mean, with black holes, they don't really uh, go by the physics laws that we know about now. Um, we would have to have a whole new law of quantum physics, which would be a really um, cool thing to know about, but something we don't know right now which I'm assuming, I'm sure she has some involvement in as far as research goes. But uh, what are some things that I learned that I already knew? A lot of things that she spoke about were new information. Um, she discussed Einstein's theory of relativity and the formula equals mc squared. And to be honest, I felt like a genius because I knew what she was talking about. Um, she used this equation to predict the most probable motion of the collision with the two supermassive black holes. The coding side of it was really, really um, intriguing to me that you can make computer models that show extensively what she was talking about. I thought that was really cool um, and kind of tried to play around in vPython to see what I could do with it and to no avail. Um, what sparked my interest in this lecture was simply that physics could be used to predict something that we have no idea about or even any really any notion, we can't prove that it exists. Um, I've always thought of physics as a mathematical way of explaining things that are happening, which we are for certain that they are happening. In this example, um, supermassive black holes, are, it's, it's, it's something that can't be experienced in any way other than pictures through equations and physics and computer programming. Yet we know it's there and can simulate what would most likely happen with simple equations. Um, and I thought, I thought that was really cool. Um, general relativity predicts that as an object, object collapses to form a black hole, it will eventually reach a, a point of infinite density. And something she talked about was how dense black holes are. And, um, that was, that was incredible just to realize how dense that can be. Um, she compared it to, uh, putting like a school bus inside of something the size of an atom, which... Isn't it's just, just crazy? So the theory of relativity breaks down, and no one knows what happens at the center of a black hole. We would need to understand a viable theory of quantum gravity in order to understand this, um, which currently scientists don't understand that. So um, that's something I'm assuming people are working on. When talking about the size of a black hole, physicists refer to the Schwarzschild radius. The Schwarzschild radius is a point of no return. Once you get closer to the black hole, then it once you get closer to the black hole than this radius, you can never escape. So consequently, the escape speed at the Schwarzschild radius is equal to the speed of light. And the value of the Schwarzschild radius works out to be about 3 um, times 10 to the 5th times the mass of the black hole over the mass of the sun. There's a rough analogy between the black hole and an atom. In both cases, the mass is concentrated in a tiny region at the center, but the size of the object is the density of the much bigger. Um, all of this was information that I learned from reading from Wikipedia, um, and it also it just gave me a much bigger insight into what she was talking about as a whole. Because I feel like she went there was she explained what a black hole was, and then delved really, really deep into the topic, and a lot of the things went over my head, but I'm glad I took notes because going back over it, it does make sense, and there's a lot that um, is to be learned from that side of physics that can be applied to a lot of things, so I, th I thought that was, I thought that was really neat. Um, I actually really enjoyed the lectures. I enjoyed the series of lectures. I went to four, um, and they were, they were all really, really cool, and just, it's a nice way to see what I'm doing now in class and how it's applicable to what's going on.